So here we are, folks. Lap one of the opening round of season six of the iRacing Sunday series, sponsored by Box 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 Gaming. Of course, hosted by Precision Racing League. So David Will did qualify on pole as they head into Hill Corner, turn one. Looks like Miko's very quickly got past Stevenson there, and he's on with attacking his teammate now, Justin, as they head down to Griffiths Bend. Quite close here at the start. Oh, and he is going to pull around the out inside. Looks like Justin is going to let his teammate through. He had a particularly bad qualifying, did Miko? So they're going to start heading up the hill now, heading towards the cutting. Here's John Vetrano heading towards Horizon. And tough corner here, the dipper. Oh, he's lost the rears. He must have locked the rears on entry. Just gone into the wall. Everybody seems to have avoided him. It looks like Ashley is having some connection issues. Just going to have to spin his car out of there. Oh, there is some damage to the rear wing. That is unfortunate for John Vetrano, who did qualify very well in this race. So at the end of lap one, with Justin here, heading down to turn one, Hell Corner. And he has got his teammate, Ashley, not far behind him. In fact, he is letting him through. As you can see, we're having some real blinking issues with Ashley here. Uh, hopefully they will clear up through the race. And they're heading up the mountain straight now towards Griffiths. So, looking at David Wilmer now, who seems to have a substantial lead. Heading down the hill from the horizon. And he's lost the rear end as he avoided the barrier. Not just a little touch at the front. Oh! In trying to recover quickly has caused twice as much damage to his car. James and Miko coming now, second and third, and they had to break to avoid him. And is Miko going to capitalise? He has. He's stolen the second position from James. And they are now down at Forest Elbow and down the Comrade Strait. Now, I hope that damage, how significant is it? Is it causing a lot of drag in a straight line for David? In which case, Miko will get past pretty quickly. We will see at the end of this long straight, if he takes a look, they are pretty close. And as they break for the chase, Miko's looking up the inside. Oh, he's backed out of the move. He's backed out of the move. He wasn't far enough alongside. Now the question is, will David pit or will he stay out? How's the car feeling for him? He has dodged the pit lane this time and he is heading into Murray's corner and down the main straight. So out of Forest Elbow they come yet again. This is lap three of the race. Can Miko make it past this time? He does seem to be in the toe, following pretty closely. They head through the kink here in the Comrade Strait. Towards the chase. He's up the inside. He has made his move. Oh, he's easily passed. There is definitely damage to the car of David Wormald here. And the question is, does he stay out or does he pit? I guess we'll find out pretty soon. And he does jump into the pits, very aggressive into the pit lane, aggressive on the brakes, using all of the curbs. Oh, and he's definitely attacking that pit lane speed limiter. So Miko is already through into first place. James is through too. And it looks like Ashley's making a move around the outside. Oh, unlucky there for James. He just got on the throttle a little too soon, perhaps distracted by not knowing where Ashley's car is. Just needs to find reverse and get out of there, and he has done so. It looks like he's gone right to the back. And David comes out of the pits and goes past his teammate. So David has got a fully repaired car now. The question is, is how far can he recover? It's a lot of ground to make up. And Ashley is retiring from the race. Connectivity issues. I think as he comically crashes into the tyre wall. Lucky for Ashley there. We are riding on board with Elvin here in turn one. And he is letting somebody through. Who's he letting through? He's letting David Will through. So he doesn't want to race him. Must feel he's quicker at this stage in the race. They're heading up the mountain straight towards Griffith's Bend here. And now David has caught his teammate at Stevenson. What will happen here? They're heading down the hill into Forest Elbow. It does look like David's got the better exit anyway. I don't think a Stevenson will make it difficult for him. No, he stays to the right and lets David through. It's great teamwork between the teammates. 
looking back now from David's car back at Stevenson as they head towards the chase yeah that move is pretty much completed so lap 7 we are coming up the mountain straight David goes to the inside and Justin has caught a tyre on the grass how has he made that corner David gets through but Justin was very lucky not to end up in the wall at Griffiths Bend there as they head towards the cutting look how close the three of them are as Stevenson is behind Justin who is behind David oh and Stevenson has brushed the wall there hope his car is okay they are now heading down the hill for his elbow oh and there is some understeer and he's caught the wall again that is going to be a pit stop for Stevenson clearly his car is damaged three corners here he enters the pit lane pretty cautiously he's got to trundle down that pit lane so slowly on the speed limit and now um, get his car repaired and then hopefully recover from there and he does get passed by James oh James has touched the grass same mistake Justin made but he has hit the wall he couldn't keep it out of the wall hopefully not too much damage there doesn't appear to be much and here we are with John Vetrano coming out of the cutting on lap 10 heading up the hill a very slow James Myers in front of him that must have been some serious damage he's got he looks at the outside is he gonna go around there he's going around the outside wow that's incredible so we're riding with Justin Sutton out of quarry corner down in Frog Hollow oh that is an unfortunate brush with the wall there it has damaged the rear right corner of the car as he heads down the skyline now through the S's oh he's locked the rears at the dipper he's managed to keep it out of the wall Elvin will get through here yeah Elvin's got through but Justin has recovered without any damage to the car I've he is pitting Justin is pitting at the end of lap 10 it, the car must feel different for him to pit there doesn't look to be significant damage so fresh for his pit stop we're heading down the hill again with Justin who's been having difficulty at the dipper and he's done it again he's locked the rears he's kept it out of the wall wow that was close he's gonna have to spin it round a little three point turn it's so tight this track luckily no damage and uh, luckily he hasn't collected anybody else in this tight part of the track and Miko's pitting lap 13 the end of lap 13 Miko is pitting there is no damage apparent on his car it must be for tyres it's an interesting strategy call he looks likely to lose his position and he has David Wormald has got through into first position while Miko pits it's an incredible recovery from David there on board with Elvin here heading towards the final turn and he's let John through Elvin seemingly not in the mood to race anybody today just looking to make it to the end of this tough race so John is through past Elvin down into the dipper David goes and he's heading down now towards the forest elbow oh he's lost a rear end he's hit the wall he's hit the wall where has the front of his car gone he's going to have to pit for repairs but that does look terminal so a little further back we're still on lap 17 here and Justin's run wide gonna keep it on the wall no he's hit the wall similar damage to what David had on the same lap he hasn't even started going down the hill yet he's got a long drive back to the pits that also looks terminal have we lost two cars on the same lap here Justin comes into the pits taking it very easy on the way in it's running down on the speed limiter it's almost certainly going to be a retirement David Wilmot has already retired looking at things there's no driver in his car and it looks like Justin will do exactly the same so we're on the penultimate lap of the race I believe and it depends on the time here and Stevenson's chasing down Elvin and Elvin's just letting him through 
doesn't want to race anybody today just wants to make it to the end I have to say it's pretty sensible remember the leader has taken himself out of the race twice in this race as Miko starts his final lap let's hope we can watch this whole lap so he heads into hell corner leaving plenty of space driving well within his limitations as we head up the mountain straight here with Miko final lap of the race we have got the white flag heading down towards Griffith's Bend still driving quite hard but leaving a little bit of leeway not bothering the curb on the exit through the left hander and into the cutting nice and steady on the brakes plenty of space being left there's no need to push at this point he's got a comfortable lead I have to say he has drove a fantastic race today whilst others have fallen at the wayside Ooh, a little wide on the curb there so we head over the horizon down through the S's through the dipper perfect line and we break down into Forest Selbo and now we head down the Comrade Strait this has been a great effort from Miko today a thoroughly deserved win the long long drive down the Comrade Strait and now we're breaking for the chase not troubling the curb too much just keeping it between the white lines and on the black stuff and he heads down not a lot can go wrong here Murray's corner the final turn of the final lap and Miko crosses the line to win the first race of the IRSS season six fantastic drive played it safe at this tough tough circuit